Welcome back. Thanks for checking out my channel. I'm Matt. This here is Higgins, aka Higgy, aka Schmiggy. Now, I don't plan on doing a ton of instructional videos on this channel because, quite frankly, I don't know that I'm qualified to do that. Sure, I can catch some bass, but I haven't been fishing my whole life like some of you. So I still have a lot to learn myself. There are plenty of you out there who would be more qualified to make instructional videos. I do, however, use Google Maps and Google Earth occasionally for my job. So in that regard, I feel like there are some things that I could teach you to make you more efficient with your map study and your pre-fishing. Map study can be very helpful because it'll give you an idea of what to expect before you even get to a body of water. It can give you an idea of where you want to start or sometimes more importantly, where you don't want to start, help you eliminate water. It's all about maximizing your time on the water and being more efficient. And that applies to fun fishing too, not just tournament fishing. Now, while I have actually found spots using Google Earth Pro that I then went and fished and actually caught fish on, I'm not gonna claim to be an expert at finding fishing spots on Google Earth. This is more about the technical aspects of actually using Google Earth, how you make markers, how you make paths, how you organize them, get them to your phone, all that good stuff. If you're somebody who is really good at map study and knows how to read that kind of stuff really well, Heck, let me know in the comments what I should be doing different or what I should be looking for. All right, anyway, let's get to it. Let's look at some maps. So first thing we need to do is download Google Earth Pro, which of course you can find by Googling Google Earth Pro. I'll also put a link to it down in the description. Go ahead and click on that. You've got these three different versions here, web, mobile. We don't need those just yet, but you will want those eventually. We're looking for the Pro on desktop, and it does have to be a desktop or a laptop, PC or Mac. To my knowledge, they don't have a mobile version of this yet. If I'm wrong about that and they do have one now, go ahead and let me know in the comments. So you're just going to go ahead and click on Download Earth Pro on Desktop. Uh, it's pretty straightforward, just like any other download. I'm not going to walk you through that. But once you do that, you'll have an icon on your desktop and in your programs. So before we get into all the things you can do with Google Earth Pro, I just wanted to show you what uh, your end result is going to look like. Um, at least this is what mine looks like. So this is Truman Lake out in Missouri, where we're going to be having the All-American Kayak Classic in April. I've never been there, so I just started doing some map study. Um, you can see I sort of outlined the boundaries there, just a rough outline. I've got all these different colored markers. Uh, blue is for boat ramps. Um, red is for a possible launch. It's somewhere where like a road leads up to the lake but it, uh, and could be able to launch there, but I'm not sure. Green is for actual verified launches, which I got from a PDF that the AAKS put out with the lake boundaries. And then yellow is uh, stuff that just looks interesting on the map that I marked. Um, and that's what I'm going to be going through and doing some more of to finish this out. But that's sort of what it your end result is going to look like. I thought that might help before we get into all the steps and you'll sort of understand what we're working towards. So now that we have Google Earth Pro and you open it up, this is what you're going to see. Um, the first thing we want to do is find a lake or a body of water. So you can just sort of zoom in using the roller ball on your mouse or if you on a laptop and you don't have a mouse, you've got the slider bar over here that you can do. So you can just drag and look around for water if you want, or if you know where you want to look, you've got the search bar up here. And maybe you don't know the name of the lake, but you know what it's near. Uh, we're going to do a lake in Nebraska, and I know it's near McCook, Nebraska. So type that in the search bar, search, and it's going to zoom you right into McCook, Nebraska. Lovely little town, sort of. Sorry, McCook. Anyway, um, so I know the lake is north of McCook, and there she is. See, it's called Hugh Butler Lake. We call it Red Willow in our club, so that's what I go by. So that's why you can just search by the town name instead. Anyway, uh, now that you have your lake, and before you make any markers, what you want to do is make a folder for that lake. You see over here I've got all these different lake folders. Um, you want to make a folder for each lake. Otherwise, once you start making uh, place marks, they're just going to show up under My Places. So you want to make a folder just for this lake. When you do, when you do that, is right-click on My Places. That's for PC, of course. Uh, Mac's going to be different, but you get the idea. Add folder. Let's name it Red Willow or 
or whatever you want to call the lake. Hit OK. Now, after I named it, I realized, you know what, let's call it Redwall of Nebraska instead. So rename Nebraska, boom. So now we got our lake folder. So now when you make start dropping place marks, you want to start out by being having that lake highlighted. Because whatever lake you start out highlighted on, that's where the markers are going to show up. So let's highlight Red Willow. And then once you drop a marker, it's now going to be a spot underneath that lake. Uh, since that's out in the middle of nowhere and I didn't title it, let's get rid of that one. Right click on it and delete. So there we go, we got our lake folder. Let's start looking for some spots. Okay, now that we're ready to start dropping place marks, uh, let's just start looking around. One of the first things I like to mark are boat ramps and possible launch spots. Uh, I'm a kayak angler, so I don't need to stick to boat ramps, but I still like to mark them anyway. Um, you know, generally want to look for spots where the road leads up to the lake. Um, like this one, it could be a launch spot. I happen to know it's not because this is actually a very steep bank, uh, but that's kind of stuff you're going to look for. So here's a boat ramp that I know of. Um, so we to drop a marker. You got this little pin icon up here. You want to click on that. You want to name your marker first. Actually, sorry, first you want to drag it to exactly where you want it. There's the boat ramp. You want to name it Boat Ramp, um, and now you can you can click on this right here. As I showed you in my uh, earlier, you can change the color and type of icon, so you can make it a pen, make it a green marker, whatever you want. Click that. Uh, you can also change the color over here. Um, but I generally just stick to the different colored markers. So once you got that, you click OK, you got your first marker. Uh, again, when you first drop one, it says untitled place mark. I, I recommend not leaving it like that because then you get just got to, it gets really messy looking when you've got a ton that just say untitled place mark. Uh, so you could just leave that blank if you want. I like to label them though so you know what's what. Let's get rid of that one. Delete. And if after the fact you want to go back and change the color or the title or anything, right click properties and then you can go back to that icon and change the color. OK, OK. All right, so let's see what else we can find. Uh, let's see. That looks like another ramp. What's that? Yep, there's another boat ramp. So. Let's drop another marker there. It's always going to show up the last type and color marker. So if this was a different kind of spot, you might you might change it to a different color. But since this is another boat ramp, let's leave it on that blue marker. We'll call this another boat ramp. Okay. Uh, let's see. We got the dam there. Uh, what's this? Uh, there's another boat ramp. Oops, that's in the way. You want to, again, drag it to the exact spot. Okay. Now, what about uh, kayak launch spots? Not a ton here, to be honest with you. Um, like this looks like it might be one. There's a road leading all the way up to this little creek back here. You can see a boat there. Um, but, see this house right there? That's probably someone's driveway, so let's leave them alone. Um, but anyway, that's the kind of stuff you're going to look for where you might be able to launch a kayak somewhere where the road goes right up to the water. Um, this, again, like a lot of our western lakes, it has really steep banks, so unless it's a boat ramp, sometimes it's hard to find a kayak spot. But let's mark some other stuff. So uh, what's this? We see this hump out there in the middle of the water. Let's drop a place mark on that. And now since this is an actual spot rather than a ramp, Let's make it a yellow marker. And let's just call that a hump. We don't really know what it is, but let's call it a hump. And, you know, this is something that you would see if you're out on the water, of course. But the nice thing about marking it is 
when you transfer these spots over to your finder, it's then easy to navigate your way to it. So you launch up here, you can look at your finder and kind of get, get an idea of where it is on the lake. So we got a hump there, you know, again, points are pretty obvious, but if you want, just drop a marker on the point. Okay, we got another little hump up here. Let's mark that. Drag it to the exact spot. Let's call it a hump. So yeah, you just kind of want to go around and look for stuff like that and just start marking them. Now let's look at some uh, ways to find the not so obvious spots. So this next feature is the reason why we want to get Google Earth Pro and not just regular Google Earth or Google Maps. It's this little button up here, the clock with the go back arrow, and that's for historical imagery. So you click on that, and then you've got this little bar up here. So as you click back, it's going back to older satellite photos. And what we're looking for is a time when the lake was really low so that you can see some stuff that's normally underwater, but back then you could actually see it. Up oh, and see, there's one right there. So if you go back and forth, you can see the difference. So let's use this one. Now you see my hump is actually just a longer point. So now we've got some more stuff to work with. So you got something like this. Here's another little hump. Let's maybe drop a marker on that. Drag it over there. Let's call that hump. See, that's one that you normally wouldn't see, but now you know it's there. Uh, same with something like this. You know, normally, you know that's a point, and you might sit right right out here somewhere throwing at this point. Well, if it's like late summer, super hot, and you know the fish are deeper, well, maybe you want to be thrown out here because it's going to be deeper. So let's mark the end of that point. And another thing you can do with spots like that where there's some uh, underwater structure, uh, you can use this feature right here, it's the path. So you click on that, and then you want to hold down left click and hold down and just drag and you just draw the outline of it. You don't have to do the whole shoreline, but just certain spots do that. You don't need to title paths because it doesn't actually show up on the screen, so I don't bother with that. So click OK. Then you see that path. And this will actually show up when you transfer this to your finder. This path is going to show up on your finder, so you'll be able to see where the... Uh, where the underwater longer point is. So let's go back to the old image. Um, well, what's that? That looks pretty cool. Looks like some brush piles or nope, those are actually rock piles. You can see they're usually underwater. So you could drop an individual marker on each pile. That's going to get a little bit busy. So another thing you could do, just knowing, just to mark that there's a bunch in the area, use the path again and just sort of Outline them. Doesn't have to be exact, just kind of quick and dirty. So once you get over there, you'll know what it is. Uh, and then maybe just drop a marker inside that for the entire spot. And let's call that rock piles. Let's see, what else we have? Um, so and again, this is another piece of structure that you're not normally going to see. So maybe you want to outline that. Okay, same thing over here. Let's outline that. Now another thing, when you have these little humps or islands, uh, rather than just putting a place marker on it, you can also outline it so you sort of know where the boundaries of that island are. Outline it. Okay, then put a place marker on it. Let's call it a hump. Okay, so then, as you can see, you kind of know where there's an island or a hump out there in the middle of the water. Like you can see, you can see sort of the contour of what's underwater there. So yeah, that's what you want to do. You want to go back to the older image and just go around and start tracing stuff that looks interesting. You might uh, see something like that. 
I'm not sure what that is, but that's normally underwater. So that might be something you want to mark. So that's what you want to do. Just go around looking for stuff that's usually underwater that you're not normally going to see. Here's some more rocks. That's a good spot. See, that's usually underwater. Let's trace that. And mark it. And you can even see these shadows here. That means it's a really steep drop. So that's going to be something that's pretty cool when it's underwater. So that's the kind of stuff you want to mark with the historical image. So real quick, let's head back over to Truman Lake. I want to show you something. It's got a little bit more, a little bit more features than Red Willow. So you can either zoom out and drag your way over there, or if you have a folder for it, you just double click on it and it's going to take you right over there. So the reason I didn't use Truman for this demo is because if you check the historical imagery and go back, the lake level really hasn't changed a ton over time, at least not that the Google satellites caught. So it never really got low enough to find those underwater spots. So that's why I went Red Willow. So this spot here, this is something I noticed when I was doing my map study this pinch point. Uh, you can see it's between a long point and an island there. Just looked kind of cool, caught my eye, so I threw a marker on it. If you zoom in, you can even see the waves, so there's some current flowing through there. There's a boat there. Um, so one more thing I want to show you that you can use along with Google Earth Pro is a program called Navionics that I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with. It's a web-based contour mapping program. You can also get it in your finders, of course, but if you go to Navionics, I'll link this below as well. You want to find your lake. Let's go over to Missouri. There's Clinton. There's Harry Truman. Where's our pinch point? Here it is over here. So now if you look at that spot on Navionics, you see all these thick black lines. I'm not a contour map expert. That's something I'm still learning. Uh, but I do know that when you see those, those thick lines, which are just contour lines really close together, that means it's a steep drop. You know, this might be, this is probably the old uh, creek channel. But for our spot in particular, along with being a pinch point, you can see it's got some really steep drops all, all around it. So that's a pretty cool spot. That's something I want to mark. But all that being said, if you look around the area, uh, you got a boat ramp right here. You got a state park marina. Got another boat ramp here. You got the dam right down here. Another boat ramp. Uh, there's a town right here. Um, so that's probably a pretty busy area. You know, I'm not the only one that noticed it, I'm sure. Uh, there's a boat on it already. So chances are on tournament day, you're not going to get that spot to yourself. But still want to mark it. Check it out during practice. See how busy it really is. Might pay off. It might not. So again, these, uh, these red launches... Um, are spots that it looks like it's a launch spot. A road leaves, ro leads right up to it. Uh, you'll have to drag your kayak down there a little bit, but it's a possible launch spot. It wasn't on the approved launch spot list, uh, but I marked it anyway, because who knows. All right, let's get back to Red Willow. All right, another cool feature is this little ruler up here. It's the measure distance. That's on regular Google Earth and Google Maps, but in Google Earth Pro, it'll actually leave uh, your path if you wanted to. So let's say you want to find out how far it is from this boat ramp over to this hump. Click on the ruler. It's on line right now. That's for a straight line. So left click once on there and click again on the hump. And it shows you it's just under a half mile. Even you guys with the motor could pedal that one. Come on. So probably don't need to save that. You just want to check the distance. So clear that. Now, what if we want to go from this boat ramp over to these rocks and see how far it is? Well, then you click on path. Since you can't do a straight line, you click on path. Click once on the boat ramp. So then you click again here and again here and there. And then finally end at the rocks. And it shows you it's just over a half mile. Again, you guys, you motor guys can handle that. Us pedal guys need to know these distances sometimes. So uh, let's, maybe you want to save this one so that you, you can, when it's on your finder, you can just follow along with this to get over to the rocks. I don't usually save paths because the name doesn't show up on the map. So there's no need to name it really. So click that. 
now you got your path from the boat ramp over to your rocks. So those are some of the most useful tools I know of in Google Earth Pro. If you know how some of these other buttons would be helpful for your map study, go ahead and let me know in the comments. But uh, let's say we've done, we've gone around, marked all the spots we liked, marked all the paths, and we're all done with it. What you want to do next is save, save that file to your computer, not just in Google Earth Pro. So you click on the, on the main folder for the lake, not any of these points, but the main one. Right click, save place as, and you want to choose KML. It gives you the choice of KML or KMZ. You want to choose KML, name it, uh, it already, it's already named. You go ahead and sit, hit save. Oh, and I didn't show you, but I, I make a folder just for my KML files, uh, but that's pretty probably pretty obvious. So. Now you've got it there in your in your files. So then what I like to do after I have that is email it to myself. That way I can access it on my phone so that I can import it into my, my mobile version of Google Maps or Google Earth. Another thing you're going to want to do with this is you can then move this file to an SD card and put that into your finder. And we'll show you how to do that right here. So now that we've saved our lake onto our computer, uh, if you want to put it to your fish, put the, all these waypoints onto your fish finder. Uh, fish finders don't take a .kml file. You have to transfer it to a different file type, and all the different companies have a different file type. So you need a program that transfers that. So I use GPS, one called GPS Babel. Uh, oh, there's my screenshot. That's actually from Red, Red Willow. Nice four pounder right there. But uh, so you can Google uh, like KML to Lorenz or KML to Garmin, whatever, and it will give you different choices. I use GPS Babel. It's free. It's easy. So it's just this little program that transfers to your file type. So you want to get the input file type, which is the KML you just created. And then you want to check waypoints, routes, and tracks so that all your paths and waypoints show up. And then your output file and format. So you see Lawrence USR, you've got Humminbird, Garmin, whatever. You got all should have all the usuals. I have a Lawrence for now. Um, file name. Uh, you don't just type in a file name. You actually have to click on this. Go to the folder you want. OHIV be going there soon, can't wait. But you want to get into the folder where it's going to be stored. Let's name it Red Willow, Nebraska. I already have a Red Willow in there. But And then save as type is your Lawrence USR. Save. And you click OK. It's going to go through this. Translation successful. If the name is wrong, if you didn't click on the folder and name it right, it's going to give you an error. So that's why you have to click on the file name for, and get into the folder and then put a name. And you hit OK and you're done. So now that you got that, what you're going to do, so you got your USR, your .usr file now. That's your Lawrence file. Then what you would do is, I don't have my SD card in right now, but if you had your SD card in, it would show up over here as a folder. And then you just drag that over to the folder you want to drop it in, into your SD card, and it's going to be on your SD card. And of course, you plug your SD card into your finder, and boom, you're ready to go. All right, another thing we can do now that we have our lake map saved into our, onto our computer is import it into Google Maps. And the reason you want to do that is because, like I said, you can't get Google Earth Pro on your phone, and a lot of us use our phone and Google Maps to find out where we're going. So let's import our lake into Google Maps. I'm going to do that by clicking on Menu. You might need a Google account for this. I'm not actually sure. Click on Your Places, Maps. There's KS, Kansas Mayan Land. That's another AAKS event I'm looking for. I've been starting some map study on that. But you want to go down here to Create Map. So then we're going to click on Import. Let's find our KML files. Here's Red Willow. Just drag it in there. It's going to start doing it. 
boom, there's all the stuff we just imported into there. So let's say we want to get directions to this boat ramp down here. Click on that. You've got this little directions to here. It's going to ask you where you're starting. Let's just say Denver. And boom, it's going to give you directions. Now I'm also going to show you how to get this, all these, all this information onto your phone as well. All right, now that you have your map saved in Google Maps on your computer, if you have a Google account, you'll be able to open it on your phone or tablet. This is the phone version. I just have it in landscape so it shows up better in the video. I'm not a maniac. Anyway, you just want to click on Save down at the bottom, then Maps, then click on the map you want, and voila, there are your waypoints. So just like on the computer, you're going to click on the one you want directions to, directions and hit the road Jack so the last thing I want to show you is how to get your waypoints into Google Earth on your phone the reason you might want to do this is if you don't have a fish finder you can use your phone to find your waypoints if the lake you're on gets even a weak signal and Google Earth seems to pinpoint your position a little bit more precisely than Google Maps so as I mentioned earlier, you can email your KML file to yourself. And when you open the email, you'll have this attachment. So then you just wanna click on the attachment. You'll see all this coded nonsense. So you wanna click on the send to button at the top. Then you just wanna find Google Earth. And there you go. You can now see where you are in relation to your waypoints just using your phone. Of course, it won't be as accurate as having it on your fish finder, but it still might help in a pinch. All right, that's it. That's all I got. Hope you liked it. Hope you found that useful. If you did, give it a like, maybe a subscribe, maybe tell a friend, all that good stuff. And either way, I appreciate you watching. Now, stop looking at maps. Get out there and get after them.